What's up YouTube? This is Collect Pokemon and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are going to talk about the news that I've received over the past week regarding the Japanese Pokemon card market and to really dive into some buyback prices in Japan and how the market has been stabilizing after the last retrace that happened in the end of, I mean, mid-June. So uh, without further ado, let's get into it. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. So first thing out of the way, I want to talk about 151. 151 after my break, the price of the booster box had actually gone up. So, you know, initially the break was around $130 and now it's gone up to like 180, 160, 180 to even 200 US dollar a booster box. Now 151 has had been very popular and even in Japan, it is still very difficult to find an individual booster box. With that said, rumors from wholesaler from card store has been telling me that there should be another wave coming on July 27th. So I think that a lot of people are anticipating the second wave of uh, 151. And I do believe that there will be a second wave um, simply because that they are reprinting this to demand, to satisfy the orders on the Pokemon Center website. So they will often print extra and to give them to wholesaler. So there's definitely going to be another wave of 151. 151 is not over yet. And I think the interesting part of this next wave of 151 is that the price will definitely drop, but it will not drop a lot. But I think that timing when to get these will be very difficult. Why would you want to time this? Because the first wave has print quality issues. A lot of the reverse hollows, the regular Pokeball reverse hollow, all have print lines and some of the god packs have actually damaged cards within the pack so what i'm trying to say is that you know it, it's it's going to be difficult to to choose which wave you're getting so you'll be buying it from a seller they would usually just sell you you the first wave when they have the second wave and they will most likely keep the second wave so that's what i am going to be expecting and the hard part is to really distinguish between the first and second wave. I don't even know if it is possible. It might be, depending on the booster case packaging, because sometimes for reprints, they still use the old packaging with the tape, or they will follow the first print wave, which is the um, the, the glue packaging. So um, it really, really depends on, on how that reprint is going to go. The second thing I want to talk about is the Ruler of Black Flame, a new set that is going to be released on July 28th, and that is the SV3 sets with all the good Charizard inside. So um, it is definitely going to be a very, very hype set. It is going to be released with a similar price point as 151. But what I do believe that this set is going to do is that it is going to do better than 151 in the short run. So. We do see a bunch of Charizard hype right now from the buy list, which I will mention later on in this video. So with Charizard, I think that the price will go up and it would stay up there. The trajectory of this booster box, I believe, will be released at around 130, 150 US dollar per booster box. And I think one week or maybe even three days after the release, we're going to see this box spike up to close to 200 US dollar per booster box um, and it's going to stay up there until there has been any sort of a reprint news and so on. Um, I just do believe that Charizard does have its charm and even though 151 has a Charizard it, it, it's just different. It's a new form of Charizard and when you release a new form, a new art of Charizard, people always like it. Just like when um, the hyper rare charger was first released people didn't like it at first and then it slowly got hyped up so i do believe that people will spot that trend and will buy into it so i don't think that this booster box will go down in price anytime soon um and with the busy reprint of 151 i don't think pokemon company in japan will have that capacity to reprint this many set i mean they're still trying to chase and reprint the svs one and SV2 sets from earlier on. So um, yeah, keep your eyes open. Um, I will open some Google form to do some box break or case break when the time comes because I simply don't have the price right now. You know, no stores and no wholesaler are telling me about 
you know, what price they're selling it at. So do keep an eye on my Instagram or my community post. Um, I will upload a Google form link and we could sort it out that way. Now the third part is the more juicy part to talk about the Japanese buy list price. So I've went to Japan at the end of June and I found that the buy list price has been pretty low but it's been slowly retracing or, or climbing back up and there are some cards that actually did not really fall at all so when we look at the trainer cards we can see that a lot of the card stores are buying it at a um, negotiable price so they want you to bring these cards in these are still very sought out of the cards the lily the team rockets you know people are starting to value certain older um trainer cards so yes i mean if you ask me is it the xy era coming back you could say that people are finally up to the xy era in terms of the trainer cards uh, we do see certain best of XY cards still asking for a lot of money. For example, Hexmania, still 1.9 million yen. I mean, we have Karen from best of XY, 870,000 yen. You know, all of these XY cards are actually much more expensive, followed by the SM cards, the Sun and Moon era cards. You know, we have the Lusamine and Lana Malo, these sort of guys, followed by the other waifu cards. We can see that you know, we're seeing distinctive price differences. And you could ask me, is it the XY era time? Likely, if you have XY era card, it might be a good time for you to, you know, take them out, look at them to see if, you know, those cards are actually worth something. You can bring them to the world and hopefully that would be at the highest or the peak of the XY prices. Now, if you take a look at the Pokemon cards, <laughs> the Pokemon Pokemon cards, not the trainer ones, you can see that the price actually didn't change much. You know, Mario, Pikachu, Luigi, Pikachu, and the um, 20th Anniversary Fiesta Pikachu is still up there right at the top, followed by a lot of Evolution cards. Charizard cards are climbing up in price, and Poncho card, like I said, will definitely be a big hit. Now, people are starting to really recognize the Munch, Munch, Scream promos, and we can see that and reflect it by the buy list. Those are one of the top buys from a lot of card stores right now. Because why? Because they sell, right? People buy it because, I mean, card store buy it because there's a demand for it. And so we do see that. I know that you guys will think that, hey, you know, collect Pokemon. You know, these have huge population. I mean, they have like a thousand PSA 10 of uh you know Mimikyu, Pikachu, Eevee, Psyduck and stuff. We're going 2000 for Rollet, right? To be very honest, 1000, 2000, it's not a lot because once these cards gets to the hand of collectors, they're never going to sell it again. They're never going to release it into the wild, into the public again. So, that's why I think that even though the pop report says 1000, there isn't much, there isn't many of them that is really circulating around. I mean, yes, there's a thousand, but it doesn't make sense. It doesn't mean anything. I know someone with at least 50 Scream Pikachu, right? You know, he's just holding on to it. He's not selling it. He's not doing anything to it. And even a small collector like me, I have like, what, 20 Scream Pikachu. So it, it's, yeah, it, we're not going to sell. And I think that... Um, then the tag team cards followed, and I think the tag team card did retrace a lot back in price. So the tag team are not as expensive. People do find it not as valuable as it seems. So what I'm saying is that a lot of the promo cards, keep an eye on it. I think they will be on this list very soon. So that's the Japanese market for you. It's changing, and I think that um, as the type of collectors become more mature into the market they're not a newbie anymore they will know what our value in pokemon cards and the whole market will start to make a lot more sense you know this happened before you know this i i, I remember i don't i remember saying this before when you have a bunch of new collectors they just follow the trend you know they follow what's high what's good what people tell them is good but once you dive deeper into this rabbit hole you learn what is value and you learn to distinguish real value and real passion versus what everyone is telling you. So I think that's where these cards will start to shine. And does it mean that 
all the other cards will not have value? No, you just have to be able to see through certain cards. And do I like manipulating the market? I love it. I was just uh, at a OJ Love's um, stream and <clears throat> you know people call me the manipulator. Well, I go tell you what card I'm buying right now. I'm actually buying up a lot of the Drowsy from S1V, SV1V. So there's still around 100 of them left on Card Rush. So before you tell that I'm manipulating a 220 yen card, think about what I think, what I believe. I believe that this is a good art. I believe that Pokemon card will be considered as art in the next 30 to 50 years. So I'm buying this card and holding it for 30 years. So is that manipulation or is that investment? I'll let you guys decide. Uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. This is Collect Pokemon. Bye-bye.